Welcome back, everyone. I'm Justin with Is It Scary Wisconsin, and I'm joined here tonight by my best friend, Gage. Merch links are in the description. When Gage remembers to put them in, make sure you check out the new Vile Green Is It Scary Wisconsin merch. And now tonight, we're here for a really special haunted attraction review. Recently, in one of our comments, it was recommended to us that we check out the Terror Shed in Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Originally started as Hunter's Haunted House in 2018, it closed down permanently during COVID and then reopened in 2021 as The Terror Shed. Reading through the reviews that they have on Google, I saw there was a lot of really positive ones saying, wow, can't believe what this haunt does with such a small space. Wow, really creative. Hey, lots of effort. A young kid put this on. And I thought to myself, hmm, we're going to be down at Warriors Haunted Asylum. May as well check out the Terror Shed, which in itself beckons me towards it because I liked the name. And I thought, you know what? Let's do it. Let's give this down home haunt a chance. So the setup for the Terror Shed is unlike anything I've seen at a haunted house since I was a child, maybe longer. Picture this, you pull into this parking area and this old style farmhouse with an ominous looking shed decorated in haunt paraphernalia sits as the centerpiece to the attraction. Now, as much as I wanted to walk right up there and get in line, first we had to make a stop at this insanely decorated and spirited garage area. We had to fill out a waiver. We had to get tickets and snacks. Now, from my first interaction with the lady who gave us the waiver, all the way to the lady at the front of the shed, I knew the terror shed was gonna be something special. Especially for the $15 ticket price for admission. Now, one of the coolest things about the terror shed, before I even got into line, was the uh, blood bag fruit punch. Hey, talk about staying in theme, wow. This haunt has an atmosphere that I don't think I've ever felt before at a haunted attraction. Maybe because it's a nonprofit or maybe because it's put on by such a spirited group and it feels like a down-home family haunted house. And then... Standing in line, we had a chance to interact with some high-quality haunt management. They gave us the lowdown before we were welcomed in by one of the creatures. But how did they score? Let's find out. General, is there a website? Yes. Does it have good information? Yes. Two points. Is parking available on site? Yes. Is it clearly labeled and attended? Yes. Two points. Is there a clearly labeled ticket booth and does it present rules and prices? Yes and yes. Two points. Clear queue lines? Yes. Two points. Are the attractions clearly marked? Yes. Two points. Are atmospheric music and audio selections appropriate? Any that there were? Yes. Two points. Did actors stay in character? Yes. Four points for reason I will discuss later. Did the was the haunt fully and well staffed? Yes. Four points for reasons I will discuss later. Was there clear directions through and after the haunt was over? Yes. Two points. Was the lighting used appropriate? Yes. Two points. Were there any unusual scents? Yes. Two points. Did we catch another group? No. Two points. Was the scenery appropriate? Hell yes. Two points. Did the haunt maintain immersion? Yes. Two points. Was the walking path safe and well maintained? For the most part, one point. Did the haunt feel appropriately priced? Yes. Two points. Did the haunt have a good atmosphere? Yes. Two points. Total, 37 out of 40, they missed three points. Gage, you're up with scares. For scares? Did the, did the actors attempt to scare you? Yes, two points. Were the masks used of good quality? Yes. Very notable for a home haunt, by the way. Did props seem real and scary? Yes. Were the actors in the correct positions to enhance scares? Yes. 
Were there a variety of monsters, uh, haunters on site? There was a variety of different creatures there on that night and that terror shed. Did any actors try to scare you twice in the scene? Yes. Did any actors or props scare you three times in the scene? Yes. And let me just say, you and I, we counted one, two, three. Like we're over like Count Dracula over here, just counting. And these guys are like, why are they counting? What is going on? Did any actors or did any scares from below the waist? Were there any scares from below the waist? That was a yes. Were there any scares from above? That was a yes. Both of which are two points each. Where there were more than jump scares in the hunt. I give them a four. It felt like most of it was all really jump scares, but still a great experience. Um, now, here's where we normally have our questions reserved for the ones, the haunts that we usually go to, you know, every other year, every year and such. And uh, uh, that was, were the scares same as last year or the just as SOS? Same old scary. We had to change that up. So we kind of kept it basic in general. We had the overall experience out of five points, and I gave them the whole five because the overall experience was enjoyable. Did any... Yes? Oh, sorry, my Discord came up and it sounded like you asked something. <laughs> uh, did any actors seem well-trained and enthusiastic? Yes. Were all props, animatronics, and devices in working order? Yes. Were there any unique scares? Now, instead of two, I gave them one. Kind of going back, this is echoing that previous question about were there more than jump scares in the haunt? It's really all just kind of jump scares for the most part. Uh, did anyone scream, get out? Thankfully not. And believe me, we were, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. We were saying that when we were hearing someone, one of them talk. Um, and last but not least, did any sounds used enhance the scares? I gave them, initially, I want to talk about this for a second. Initially, I gave them a no. But then I thought about it. And I, silence is golden in some cases. You either have no sounds or you have a lot of sounds. And that's where... They came in the clutch here, and I gave them the two points. It's like not having music can still enhance the atmosphere, mm -hmm. even if you don't have any audio. That in itself is a form of audio. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so it's just... It sets up that atmosphere is the key word for this situation. Bonus points? What's your overall score out of 40? My overall score out of 40... Did you forget to Give do me, math? What was your overall score? I realized I didn't count did this you forget, up. Did you forget to do math? Mine was 37 out of 40. I have to tell you guys, the Terror Shed was a really uh, neat experience. And it was a very different experience walking in there and getting out of the car and so I kind of turned, the guy was kind of pointing to us, telling us where to go. You know, hey, go park here, go park here. Check in at the garage, which where you'll sign your waiver. That's where you'll get your tickets, you know. And we're going to kind of talk about this a little bit more here after we get the general point structure set up here. But just kind of when we got out of the car, I, I grabbed one of the people I was with and I said, I'm really excited for this. I want this to be good. Because the outside setup is so interesting and it beckons you in and it kind of makes you... It kind of makes you really suspend disbelief and it makes you really excited to go into the haunt. You know, you just want to skip all that other stuff and you just want to get right to the action. And that was kind of where I was at. And then I, and then we're kind of, you know, one of us had to go to the bathroom and we're, we're just kind of standing outside talking it over. And I was like, you know what? I want to take this in. I want to go into the garage. I want to see what they have to offer. I want to check all this stuff out. And... That That is something that the Terror Shed did really good. Gage, where are you at? How many points? You know, I realized as I was counting it up, I could just subtract from the minuses. Yeah. And yeah, so right now, I out of 40, they had 38. 38 out of 40 for a home yeah. hunt. So that's a 75 out of 80 as their current standing score. Okay, let's uh, let's just talk for a little bit about uh because you know i wanted we'll do the bonus points at the end you know again we talked about this doing the full review right intro then main points and then discussion and then extras and then don't forget mva too um i was talking uh just now about how there is that kind of feeling 
walking up to the terror shed when you've never been there before, mind you. There, it's a different atmosphere. It's it's a fun, and it, it's kind of a mysterious atmosphere. And then all of a sudden, the dude comes running out with the chainsaw, chasing some kids. Ooh, <laughs> now now you got my attention. Now Almost you got my. Like, uh... Yeah. Boo Boo, what's his name from uh, Texas yeah. Chainsaw yeah, yeah, Massacre? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Now you got my attention, and I'm watching this kid work all night long. And I, 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 I actually left a, uh, I left a scarret badge, scariest actor there for them, because, I, you watch this kind of actor work, right? And first of all, you you chase him out, and then you go running and you're swinging the chainsaw around, and then you run back in, and then you come do it again, and then you run back in. Now. You know, some people will say, it didn't scare me. It's not scary. The effort that it takes to do that is otherworldly. Repetitiously. Trust, trust me, at 37 years old, I don't think I could do it for more than an hour. And these people are out there doing this for the haunt all night long. Mm -hmm. Now, that shows a level of commitment to the product and to the haunted attraction to me. That shows a level of commitment to the Kiwaski food pantry, which I thought was really cool. And again, I want to remind everyone that this is a nonprofit haunt, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let's, let's just kind of talk about that ticket center, that garage, that kind of check-in. Sure. So, of course, you know you fill out the waiver basically saying... You know, even if I die, I'm not going to come after the terror shed, which. My vengeful ghost cannot haunt the shed. Trust me, my vengeful ghost will haunt the shit out of that terror shed. But anyway, it is a really cool. It's like we talked about when we did the Berlin Tannery, right? Those hold harmless agreements. No way are those going to hold up in court. But anyway, irregardless. That is a really nice touch. And that sets the stage for the show that you're about to get. Mm -hmm. I really, really like that. Another thing that I liked was I liked that they actually have their prices listed. You know, Gage, you and I have talked about this a few times now this year. We've went to quite a few haunts that don't actually have their basic ticket prices listed. Mm -hmm. I mean, how wild is that to you? I think if I just put a product out and just said, here, buy this, I wonder how many people would actually say, how much is this? You know, like, you just expect people to know that your haunt is $20 every year. So, what did you think about the, uh, like, the concessions and the theming therein, and they had board games available? What did you think about all that stuff? It was just humble. I really liked it. It uh, it really hit. It, I don't want to say it hits home because I never had a home like that. But I do want to say if I did have a home like that, it would hit it like a truck yeah. because it was just. It felt sincere. It felt humble. It felt honest and wholesome. And then yeah. you get into the nitty gritty and get in the hot, and then it's just gore <laughs> and blood and guts and rah. Here's a cobra about to bite you and your dog yeah yeah <laughs> it, 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 we use the word humble right and we actually went to warriors haunted asylum on the same night i would use the word humble to describe both the terror shed and warriors haunted asylum i don't know if it's something about fond du lac and kewaskum in those general areas but that is the feeling i got from both of these places they mm -hmm. wanted you to feel welcome they wanted you to experience it, and they wanted you, you know, you're a part of it, right? And that yeah. was, I liked it. You know, it was like, oh, welcome to my haunt. By the way, I'm I'm the best haunt in the area. I'm the scariest, but I'm this, I'm that. You know, they just reminded you that, hey, this is done by a young man, a very young man, and this is, you know, this is a kind of their, their project and their... They really, they love doing it, and the, the community comes out to support it, and, you know, we really hope you have a good time. Well, I'm here for it. I'm here for this. You and know, maybe, I really, sorry? Then maybe I'll get a good scare out of it, too. You know, I really love to see this because 
this is almost like the origin story for every great haunt that you see out there on the map. Remember, you know, remember revenge, revenge realm. You know, it, it's just there's so many good haunts out there that started from just a garage haunt. You know, it, it, it's it's it gets me excited to see what comes next in the next couple of years. You know, you know, Dalton and Ben of Realm of Darkness started at 12 and 14 years old in their parents' front yard and garages. And now this they is have, a shit. <laughs> and, now, and now they have one of the most popular haunts in our area. Let it be known that it is hard to get into without waiting quite a yeah. while. That's yeah. how popular they are. We've yeah. had to skip them some nights. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, we go into the garage. They have these blood bags of fruit punch for sale, little snacks, suckers, you know. The board games on the yeah, they got like tables. checkers and stuff set up, and there's some kids playing some cards, and there was an older lady in the back. I think she was playing solitaire or something. She was happy. I think she, it was a birthday. Yeah, I think it was a birthday or whatever. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I don't think she's gonna watch this, but yeah. There was <laughs> an atmosphere at the terror shed I haven't experienced in a very long time at a haunted attraction, and I actually I gotta break my character for a second here, Gage. Terror shed, thank you. Thank you for reminding me why I love going to haunted attractions with my best friend so much. Because when I first walked up the other night, you almost brought a tear to my eyes. And I mean that sincerely. There was a feeling in my chest. There was a feeling of familiarity, yet uncertainty. You really got me the other night. I want you to know that. Even if... Nobody else ever comes along and tells you this. I want you to know, this is between me and Terror Shed. I want you to know, you did a damn good job. And I really, really like that sense, that feeling that I got when I first walked up. There's, a, there's something in the atmosphere. Gage, you and I have talked about this before with haunts like Green Bay Fear, these kind of home haunts that feel like home base for us. Mm -hmm. If we live closer to Terror Shed... That would be Terror Shed for us. We drove an hour and a half for that show. I'm glad we did. Mm -hmm. Any other points you want to make before we jump into extra points tonight, Gage? Just impressed. I really am impressed because I, <clears throat> I don't go. I don't. I don't want to say I go into haunts expecting a terrible show, but almost as a reviewer, you kind of have to. You know, you kind of have to understand that. Something might be terrible. And or you might find that diamond in a rough. And I feel like Terror Shed was really a kind of a diamond in a rough kind of ordeal. I, I didn't expect it to be really as good as it was. I'd like to jump into bonus points, yeah. I think you know, and I think some people would hear that. Some people hear you say that and they think what kind of statement is that to make? But people that know you know that when you say, I didn't really expect it to be that good, and I was blown away by it, mm -hmm. when when people that know you hear you say that, they're like, whoa, that's big praise coming from him. You know, because we go we go to all the ones all over the place. We go to all the haunts all over the place, and we've seen, you know, chainsaws in our face and, you know, uh, uh, crazy butcher jump scares, guys diving across tables at us. Slamming into walls when we didn't expect them, you know. I mean, we've seen it all. We've seen everything now. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I tell you that that's a big compliment from Gage, that's a very big compliment coming from Gage. So let's talk extra points. So for those that don't understand the way our reviews work, 40 points comes from general from me. 40 points comes from scares from Gage. And then we both have up to 10 additional points to give to the haunt. We add everything up, and that's their total out of 100. So I that hit, way, if it was a haunt that hit all bars and we just hated it, you know, they're still going to get an 80. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We wanted our reviews to be more a lot of, like, classic haunting stuff, right? Like, what are mm -hmm. things that every good haunt should be having? Well, parking and proper ticketing and somebody at the booth and all this stuff right 
and directions and a stable walking path and good scares and two scare rooms, three scare rooms, uh, up and down scares, stuff like that, right? That's things that all haunts should be trying to have to, you know, to have a good quality show. And then if we want to give some personal opinions, that's 20 points of the review. We wanted to keep the personal opinions only at about 20% because we don't want these reviews to just become, yeah, I liked it. Well, I didn't. I gave him a 40. I gave him a 90. Uh, you know, that's a 65 or a 70 average. You know, it was okay. You know, yeah, we don't want it to become that kind of thing. So that's why we do it the way we do it. Extra points. Here we go. I gave them plus one for atmosphere. Totally different than any haunt I've been in all season. This and revenge are the first two are the first times I got this feeling in my chest this year. As and of right now. As of right now. And that's because revenge is a little bit more personal for us. Um but this haunt really did it right that 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 kind of welcome camaraderie feel we had from them. That was good. Plus one for atmosphere walking up. I gave them plus one for the garage, blood bags, the gathering area. This was an awesome midway style area. I loved it and I am here for it. Plus one, claustrophobia. And it looks like they worked about two haunts worth of scenes, even though they were smaller scenes. We talked about this with Revenge before they moved over into their new location, but their rooms used to be smaller. They This haunt, Terror Shed, worked about two haunts worth of scenes into one building. Now that's impressive. This was about a 12 to 15 minute haunted house experience, and they crammed you through probably one and a half to two, two and a half haunted house worth of scenery. Really, really impressive. An extra, an extra point for the claustrophobia and everything, uh, how it worked together to keep, yes, the rooms were small, but it also worked in favor for like the feeling of, you know, like you could, you're really like, it's tight in there. It's, 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 it can set off those claustrophobia, uh, phobias. Plus one, the animatronics were pretty good. I liked it. We saw there was a couple different ones. I don't want to. I don't want to get descriptive we on should. them because I don't want to spoil that for anybody that's planning on going there. But some of those animatronics were really good. I haven't seen them before. I liked it a lot. Um, I gave an additional point for an actor attempting to do what we've been discussing this year, Gage. They tried to set up that scare. When we were leaving one of the rooms, they said, say hi to the clowns for me. Immediately triggering in my lizard brain, there's going to be a clown ahead. They tried to set that up. That's expert scare acting. Okay? We don't see that at a lot of haunts right now that we've been going to. We haven't been seeing a lot of that. We have seen it. At Green Bay Fear, we talked about this with the lady in the house. Now, this guy tried to set it up the other night. Unfortunately, the scare in the clown room wasn't the best. But the setup for it was damn good. And if you are afraid of clowns, they've already got your heart beating faster just by saying the word. I liked it. Extra mm -hmm. point. Plus one. The chainsaw work was supreme. Not good, not great, not excellent. Supreme. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort to do that. And when I saw him revving and ripping and roaring, I gave him the fist bump of approval. It was quite, quite excellent. Very good. And the pop-out scares. Plus one, they were cool. And you know what? Honestly, if I had been where the two girls had been in our group, they would have got me every time. Mm -hmm. I saw where they were coming from. I was kind of watching over things as the scares happened. I wasn't really getting a lot of the scares. Totally fine. Other was I. Yeah, yeah, t totally fine. We were at the back of the group. We were kind of watching, you know, see how the actors worked the girls. And, hey, uh, and they worked us. 
Yeah, they weren't they, done. They were saying, we're a bunch of grown men letting the girls go What first. are you doing at the back of the group? You know, they weren't afraid to pick at us. Good actor interactions. But the actual pop-out scares that were getting the girls, they got us. And they were good pop-out scares. And the timing was solid for that position in the group. Really positive. I liked it. And if it had been me up there, guess what? You would have scared me too, and I'm a 37-year-old grown-ass man. Plus one points. Seven extra points that put your current standing total at 82. Gage, give it to us. So for points, bonus points, I gave them an A point for the snacks thing, the theme, like the blood packs. I also want to make note to the people who are newer to our channel, bonus points will more than likely echo what each other say yeah we so don't i'm probably gonna get the same point beforehand. we don't discuss bonus points with yeah. one another so no. as he's listing off all of his i'm like well that's pretty much almost my entire list so <laughs> so i'm just letting y'all know yes bonus point for the blood bags an additional bonus point for the impressive set pieces and animatronics for a home hunt it's just i didn't expect that this, like I said, I came into this haunt expecting, okay, there's going to be some cute little cloths hanging on a string. Woo! You know, kind of a deal. Tell me the truth. You thought this haunt was going to be mid. No BS. Tell me the truth. I would say mid. Mid's the best word for it. You thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be mid. I was wrong. And I love to be proven wrong about these things. Believe me. My next point is claustrophobia simulator because oh hey up down left right you know people with the knees <laughs> that's kind of an inside joke between he and i but i digress the claustrophobia is claustrophobia i have a hard time saying that it's tight you will be oh there's lyle you will be shimmying through some things you will be crouching under some things and it's even came to a point i'm not going to say it but it came to a point to where they use a certain prop that enclosed you. And it, I, I didn't expect that because like I said, for my previous one, very impressive set pieces for a, a hunt. I expected, like I said, the simplest things, but they kind of went all out. So yes, the, my third additional point was due to claustrophobia. My next point is the atmosphere in games. Cause when we walked up, it felt like a family. It, it felt like we were family of a sort. You know, it felt like I was going over to my cousin's house for like a, a Halloween party. You know, you know what I mean? So I, I really enjoyed that. I had to give a bonus point for that atmosphere. And, you know, I wouldn't mind hanging out there for like about an hour to get into the haunt if I had to. Because that was just, it was just such a chill place. And the food looked good. Again, previous point. Fit the theme. Moving on, my next point is the usage of space. Because looking at it from the outside, that's kind of unremarkable. I'm not going to say like the like just like the size of it. You're looking at it like okay, unremarkable is the right word. Yeah, I it, I was thinking okay, again came into it thinking it's gonna be mid. All right, so we're gonna have like four or five rooms. Cool. No, no. They were not four or five rooms. They were like 10 or 15 hallways is what they were. And that was a usage of space. I'm going to tell you something. If I ever have to go on a camping trip and I need to pack everything into my car, I'm going to ask these guys for help because they know how to make use of space. That's it for my additional points. I also want to make up. a big... What's Wait. Up? Save your next point. Save your next thought. Okay. I'm giving one additional point. For the way they separated each room experience and one didn't bleed into the next. We talked about that this is a during good point. the haunt. That was exceptional. How they go from a darker, drabber looking room into a real bright That's looking right. greenhouse. Remember that scene? You were like, look That's at how right. they separate these rooms. They're two totally different experiences. I'm giving an additional point for that. So you're at it, 83. And I do want to. gave five points, right? Correct. 
83. So then I had an 88. 88 out of 100 for a total score. I, I love that you brought that up because I remember saying, mm -hmm. going through this, I'm like, did they yeah. really make an entirely dark hallway? Again, these aren't rooms pretty much. They're hallways. They make an entirely dark hallway to then just flashbang. <laughs> yeah, you ain't wrong. Now, what yeah, was the here's point a bright wanted, room. What was the point you wanted to make? The point I wanted to make is this haunt obviously does not, like, pay for sponsoring. They don't, they're not putting ads on Facebook. They're not putting ads on TV or whatever, you know, not on the radio. This is purely a word to mouth haunt. I want to make this known to any haunt that you go to, whether it be Revenge or, um, you know, or even Terror Shed. You have to get that word out there. If someone asks you for a haunt, sure, you can go ahead and say, well, hit the local locations. But don't be afraid to drive an extra 30 minutes or sometimes even an hour just to hit these cool little home haunts. MVA. Chainsaw. That was mine too. There's a reason I gave him the Scarab badge. Outstanding work. That was mine as well. So before I go too deep, I want Terror Shed to know that we are known for having a very no BS approach to our reviews. We don't sugarcoat things, we're not babysitters. We hurt a lot of grown men's and grown women's feelings with our overly honest haunt reviews. And it's incredible how many feelings we do hurt. And since this is probably your first big YouTube review, at least when I searched for it, I didn't really see any, I'm gonna keep this very simple. Terror Shed, has all the tools to become and remain a mainstay haunted attraction in southern Wisconsin. That's not opinion. Those are facts. Some of your scares, they were a tad early. Your clown scare could use some work. Overall, I liked the show. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in three to five years and I expect you to grow even larger and better in that time. My final thoughts on the Terror Shed are I'm happy we drove an hour and a half to see this show because it was worth every minute being crammed in that car. Singing Narwhals. Singing the Narwhal song. <laughs> we had a fantastic experience at the Terror Shed. Anybody watching this review wondering if they should go, the answer is yes. For $15, this is one of the best values in haunts in Wisconsin. I really enjoyed my time there, and I would and will go again. Thank you for an awesome experience. 88, out of, 88 out of 100 makes you a great haunted attraction. With that being said, there's only one question we want to ask. Is it scary, Wisconsin? You tell us.